now we do five question of ethics you understood the case after reading it okay now i was a research analyst at a, a previous firm and now i have started my own uh, practice one client approaches me i did not approach the client the client approached me and told me to update the research report which i had made at my previous job okay now i updated the research report which first of all i shouldn't have done first of all i had that record with me so it is the property of the employer always how did i take it with me that's a violation violation of which standard standard 4a loyalty to employer did you seek employer's permission no i did not seek employer's permission and still i had the records so violation number 1 violation number 2 i updated the research report which i shouldn't have and in that updation also i copied something from mint newspaper now in that mint newspaper that article was originally written by the pharma association and i gave credits to mint newspaper what was the original source you have to give credit to both the primary and secondary source i just gave credit to the secondary source i should have taken the efforts to actually go and check the main article whether or not it is proper and accordingly given credit to both primary and secondary source so now here what is the violation he did not give credit to the primary source which is the pharma associations website he just gave credit to the secondary source now in the sense that the client contacted me did i do any violation no the client can contact me and once i leave the job i can also contact the client provided it is not from the stolen database of my ex employer i had told you that if the client details are available in public domain i can contact or if i happen to accidentally meet the client somewhere i can tell them about my offerings so that is not so please be careful least likely violation is option a solicited the ex firm's client the ex firm's client approached me samne se he approached me i did not approach him and even i would have even if i would have approached the client from a public records and all then that would have been okay so that is least likely a violation b did not obtain consent to use the ex firm's report that was a violation so in that is most likely a violation so i cannot mark b in least likely and c is also most likely the violation did not cite the actual source of pharma study the primary source was not cited by him so that was most likely a violation so again in least likely i couldn't have marked option a clear so what have you decided finally what should be the answer see now kim works at a firm and he received an unsolicited trade request now the, what do the standards on unsolicited trade request tell you just be careful about it now say for example i am the portfolio manager a client comes to me and tells me to do something and it's an unsolicited trade request and it's not suiting the ips so i have to check a few things number 1 whether it is in sync with the ips if no i have to check number 2 communication with client is a must in all this i have to tell the client i have to educate the client that the demand that you are putting across is unreasonable it is not a part of your ips till you are telling me to take this trade that is number 2 so please make the client aware of this okay third i made the client aware client is not willing to change the ips okay fine i check what is going to be the impact on total portfolio now in this question the client asked me to only buy some 1% of his total portfolio which is mentioned here to invest 1% of her portfolio in biotech stocks so is the impact going to be material 1% of portfolio is not anything fine impact is not material and point number 4 does my firm have any policy 
regarding unsolicited trade requests now in the question can you see anything regarding my firm policy no so my firm does not have any policy regarding unsolicited trade request so now i bank on these three factors number 1 it's not in accordance with the ips of the client number 2 i have communicated it to the client and number 3 the impact is going to be hardly anything on his total portfolio so the standards tell you that you can make this trade and he has made the trade as a portfolio manager dennis kim has undertaken the trade so it is not a violation option a understood now if i twist the question and i mention it like this that my firm policy strictly denies any unsolicited trade request and i have still done that trade for my client then it would have been a violation i hope you understand that no the standards themselves tell you na if there is no firm policy then in, if the impact is minimal you can undertake the unsolicited trade fine okay but communication with a client is a must and what if the impact on portfolio were uh, something sizable then i would have to tell the client that boss i cannot undertake this trade no matter what unless and until you are willing to change the ips the client is stubborn client tells me no no i won't change the ips you still take the trade now i know for a fact that impact is going to be material i will also be stubborn as a portfolio manager i'll tell the client no i won't take the trade the client at max what he will do what he or she will do will threaten me to leave i should let the client leave i should let the client leave that is what the standards have prescribed okay now see what is happening happening uh cope is a cfa charter holder okay also when i say cope is a cfa again it's a violation of the standards cfa has to be used as an adject adjective and not as a noun C cfa charter holder that's how i should be mentioning okay so cope is a cf jordan cope cfa is an analyst with a hedge fund and works closely with deepa bose who earned her cfa designation 15 years ago cope becomes aware that bose uses her cfa designation even though she no longer pays her membership dues if she does not pay her membership dues is she allowed to use the cfa designation no she is not During several meetings that Bose and Cope have with the firm's clients, Bose emphasizes that all her team members, including herself, are CFA charter holders. Bose claims that. Is it okay? No. So should Jordan Cope remain silent about it and do nothing? No. As per Standard One A knowledge of the law, if he reports any such if he sees any such violations, he should report it immediately to the firm's compliance department. Not only that. do you want to work with someone who is in violation of the law so he should also disassociate himself from the activities in which deepa bose is involved so option c is correct dissociate himself from activities involving bose and report bose's conduct to the funds compliance department clear okay now this question 4 as such there is nothing to solve this is a fact which you must remember according to the no according to the gips standards a firm a firm must include a terminated composite on the firm's list of composite descriptions for at least 5 years after composite termination date 7 years for, was for record retention as per standard 5c that was under code of ethics but gips when it comes to composite once a composite has been terminated after 5 years post termination till 5 years you have to show the performance of that terminated composite at least 5 years upward is your choice okay this fact you will have to remember now she is undertaking some changes in the way she selects stocks now whenever there is such a big change 
should you communicate it to the clients of course uh, standard 5b communication with clients and prospective clients you should be communicating such changes she has communicated but over a phone call now is phone call considered an appropriate channel of communication yes i told you recorded line that is considered an appropriate channel for communication so it's not necessary that it has to be only written communication it can be over email over a phone call as long as it is a recorded line just that it shouldn't be oral communication face to face because then there is no record for that so she is not under any violation clear fine yes of course record is there no it's just not written it is over a telephonic conversation so that's okay as long as it's a recorded line now in absence of info you have to assume it's a recorded line okay fine clear i had told you no some trades during revision i had told you some trades recorded line confirmation was happening so that is a valid communication fine okay any doubt if i have not paid my membership dues i can at max tell my clients and prospective clients and to anyone i meet that i was a former cfa charter holder i can mention that because it's a statement of fact if i say that i am a current cfa charter holder then that's wrong that will violate the standard i can say i have cleared three levels of cfa that's a statement of fact i can say that cfa has enhanced my skills i can mention that but i can nowhere mention that because of cfa i can achieve superior performance as compared to other that is wrong yeah if i have not paid my membership then i cannot say that i am a cfa charter holder i can simply mention i have completed all three levels of cfa that's it okay fine yes any doubt 